And once again, here at the Independence Reform Bible Church, we do allow for questions following the uh, sermon. Who has the first question? Yes, sir. Joel, do you think it's... Is that hot? It's on. Hello. I'll try that now. You have it on mute? Yeah. You have it on mute? Yeah. Now it should be. Okay. Right. Oh. Uh, you're, you're, you're hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. <laughs> um, do you think it's a stretch to take 15, 16, and 17 of chapter 4, and out of that together that it's another argument being made for the, uh, the importance and the necessity of believers gathering at local fellowships? In, in other words, so 15, you've got him saying, you count as guides in Christ. Okay? Um, but he's saying... But you don't have many fathers, and then he's urging them to imitate him. And then in verse 17, he's saying, that's why I'm sending an actual person to you, sure. so that you can be with them. Would, would you see that as a stretch to make an argument that there he is again arguing for the essentialness of being in a fellowship and not just watching somebody you know, on, on TV from the comfort of your home? Yeah. Because that would be a guide in Christ, but it's not someone that you can actually imitate and get alongside. Sure. Is that a stretch, or what do you think on that? No, that's that's uh, basic to what he's saying, and um, we've all, we've, I don't want to say we all, but I, you probably have from time to time a conversation with a person. You know what? I don't need to go to church. I can just sit down on the rock and worship God. Well, I, I don't know if you're on the rock or not, but um, you know the church is not our idea. It's not Paul's idea. Either. It's it's God. It's God's idea. And we do not have that choice to be out on a rock hermit like. Because what I what I found out a lot a lot of these folks is it's not that they're out hermit like all the time. A lot of these folks they have they have their friends and the stuff that they do. They're off the football game or they're part of a hunting lodge or whatever. They're very very social. Just so they don't want to hang out with people of God. But one of one of John's um, texts, First John, is, is a book of tests. And we've talked about this before. John, John the Apostle of Love is just a pretty tough guy in, in, in 1 John. A tough guy. And one of his tests, you may recall, is do you love being with God's people? That's one of his tests. And his test is if you don't love being God's if you don't love being with God's people, if you don't want fellowship with the people of God, you're not one of us. Pretty stiff stuff. But yeah, there's no doubt that that's what that's saying. There's a, um, on 422, I'm not sure what it is. Um, if you go down 422 past Pottstown, there's like a, there's a building and a, and a website. I think it's like uh, moviechurch.org. It's the movie church, yeah. Well, what do they do there? It's just uh, one of these big, old, big churches. But I'm on, you know. Okay, they meet the movie theater or the past. Well, they built the church around the movie theater. They used to meet in the movie theater down at Oaks, and then okay. they moved out and continued the. Meeting. Okay, so okay, so, so they 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 made a pass, so they interact. It's not like you just watch a movie. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. They just right. continue. I wonder what that was. Okay, yeah. thanks but for But it's just one of these big mega churches that are around. So. Okay. I mean, I mean, you. It could be pretty. Uh, you know, nice to have drive-in church. You know, you know, big screen, come in your pajamas. Don't have to talk to any people in church. Popcorn. You know what problem they are. They serve popcorn. They serve popcorn. It's a popcorn. They, they, have, a big, popcorn. they have a big, um, like, cafe. It's very... It's very hip. Yeah. Okay. More than pretzels and apple crackers. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they do it during us. <laughs> yeah. Um, who else has a question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Thank you. Thank you. Right here. Oh. Right here. Right here. Sorry. Close it. Close it. I'm not really sure what my question is, except that you talked about not shaming our children, which I, of course, totally agree with. But in another context, we've certainly had conversations where shame has just been taken out of our culture. We're not allowed to shame anyone for anything ever. Like, is there a line someplace? Are there some things that... 
Yeah. People should be ashamed. Of yeah. Um, yeah. They. Let me see. Verse, chapter. Where is it? I say this to your shame. Is it six eight? Where is it? A place where he does use shame. Yeah. Okay. Verse five, of chapter. Eight. I, I say this to your shame. It, is it so? And we'll talk about this later. Um, that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren. But what he's doing there is he's saying, I, I am, you, you really should be ashamed about this particular act. And, and the point that I um, want, to, want to continue to make is that when we were, oftentimes in our own homes, in our families, the shaming of our children is a, is a result of our failure properly discipline their actions earlier on. And so we have no, we have nothing left except this, this general shaming and this, this laundry list of what, what terrible people they are. Uh, which is really, really radically different. Our discipline, I think Paul's discipline here too, it must always be aimed at their at their actions. And what because a, a child has to know what he has to do to, to please his parents. And what he has to do to displease. What happens is, oftentimes in our families, child doesn't know because we haven't made clear distinctions, because we haven't given proper warning, because our warnings are not really warnings. And so we're left with that general shaming thing. It's not a good, it's not a good thing. Again, uh, children are grown up, I'm now the expert on this kind of thing. I'm sure I was such a big expert earlier on. My kids can tell you. Not a big expert now. Who else has a question or a comment? Um, you mentioned the Roman practice of infanticide yes. earlier. Yes. And how that relates to this passage. Considering that, how would you say that this passage applies today in our culture with aborticide? Portion of our practice of infanticide. Well, the, the, the easy, quick answer, if, if you will, is how many children go to that butcher shop with the approval of the dad, of the of the father. I'm going to call him dad of the of the physical, biological father. That's what was happening here, and I didn't, you know, didn't read it, but. Um, <laughs> The, the, the relationship between a, a, a father, a husband and wife, was such a distant thing, it was purely business. I read a terrific article that John sent me this week from Andrea Schwartz, what was the name of that word? Power. Uh, power on her head. Power. power on her head. Terrific article talking about the, 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 the knowledge that a husband and wife have to have between each other in order to run a household. They have to be in constant contact. But you recall, how, how Pilate's wife communicated with Pilate. Remember that? Pilate's wife had a real important message to get to Pilate. Don't mess with this man. I had a dream. Do not do anything to him. Uh, there's going to be trouble if you do. That sounds like a pretty important message, right? Remember how uh, Pilate's wife delivered that one? Send a message and what I found out from reading out uh, Professor Schmidt was that um, husband and wife didn't talk in Roman culture. They didn't raise the family together. They told their dad just declared the way it was supposed to be. Mom did it, and that was the end of it. Sounds a little... I was, I was going to say, that sounds a little bit like Patrick Rogers. We'll deal with that another time. Who else has a, John has a question. Right? Um, when Timothy gets to Corinth, well, he, I, I, I believe he's not yet here. And right. He's later in the book, he says, I'm sending him. Right. Um, but when he gets there, would he have the authority to do the judging? Would he have the authority to discipline? Uh, he doesn't mention that. He more or less makes it out to be his own to bring rather than uh, delegate to I just, how do you read it? 
Yeah, great question. I, it, it certainly looks to me like Timothy does not have that authority, at least not at this point, because of what Paul says later. I'm upset at Timothy, but I, I think he, he puts that together with the whole rod thing, because he's saying, I'm going I'm to know, because uh, I'm going to find out from Timothy. Timothy's going to tell me what's going on. And I, I believe Apollos had already told what was happening there. That's how he knows so much. He's getting these letters from the, he, he getting these letters about the uh, divisions in the church. And now he's going to find out from Timothy what's going on. Um, and you and I have talked about this, John. And uh, one, one thing about Paul the missionary, Paul the pastor, if you will, he really worked hard to know the condition of the flock. He, he was not some distant guy far away from everything. He, he knew the condition of his, of his people. And um, called Timothy a stool pigeon, called him a spy, called him an extra pair of eyes. But the church of Jesus Christ and the condition of the, of the Corinthian believers were far too important to be left to chance or to their own testimony. Paul's going to find out what's really going on. I think that's the main thing of what Timothy's going to do here. Time for one more question or comment.